Hey everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. Today I'm going to do a denim tank upcycle. Here is the before and the after. A long, long time ago, I used to have a vintage business and I had this shirt that I always liked and I decided to keep it for myself, but I never really wore it. So I wanted to update it to make it a little bit more modern and me. Before we get started, let's go over the supplies and I'll list everything down in the description below with links. First, you're gonna need a denim tank and some lighter denim scraps, embroidery thread of any color. I used ivory, an embroidery hoop, a large needle for embroidery, an iron and an ironing board, a sewing machine, elastic thread for shirring, scissors, and chalk. Again, everything is listed down below. First, what I did was I took my seam ripper and took apart the side seams. You can also just cut it apart, but I like the look that it has when you seam rip it. So after I seam rip it, I'm going to press all of the seams flat, which is really important because I'm gonna be sewing on that seam later. Next, I'm taking apart the hem. I'm going to make it a longer tank, so I'm going to just throw away all of those um, extra threads, and you can see on the right there, it's been completely seam ripped, and it's ready to add the go days. So that was really fast, and here you can see it on the form. Everything is ironed and uh, prepped for the next steps and you can see those white lines from the old hem which is so pretty so next i'm going to move on to my denim scraps and this is an old pair of jeans that i've had for a long time and if you've watched my confessions of a fabric hoarder video which i'll link down below in that video i go over all of my favorite scraps of fabric and pieces of fabric with the projects that I've been meaning to do. I don't know if you have any projects like that in your fabric stash, but I have a feeling you do. And this is one of the pieces that I've been really excited to use. And I'm so happy to be using this denim on this denim tank. I had already started this embroidery project and what I had done was taken this exact embroidery hoop and uh, sort of made an invisible circle and then every half inch I drew a line with a pen just to mark where I wanted my pattern to be so I am gonna finish it off and I'm going to just use my Acru uh, embroidery thread and my embroidery hoop and just get the denim into my embroidery hoop nice and tight my embroidery floss has been doubled. It's only two pieces of a floss and then I'm just going to continue on with this pattern, which is a geometric pattern. I'm just making this pattern up as I go and uh, I just wanted it to be triangular and geometric. So it's nothing special, it's just connecting all of the corners of the squares that I drew in this. Here is a little close up of it. As you can see, it's not perfect. I'm just making the squares with the embroidery thread and then I'm going back and connecting every other square with a diagonal to give it kind of like a diamond shape. So of course in my attempt to use up my art supplies, I ran out of the supply and had to go to Michael's to quickly pick up another skein of embroidery floss, which is always such a dangerous territory for me because I always want to order or buy more things. I made it out pretty well and I got my floss and I did get one other bottle of fabric paint, which I'm planning something really exciting, so stay tuned for more. Let me know down in the comments if going to the craft store is also a tricky thing for you. So here it is a little further along and you can see that I've connected a lot of those diamonds and it's almost ready to cut out and applique onto my denim tank. So 
I just continued to do two half moons. I left a little space in the middle for cutting. So next I'm going to make some godets for the side seam. Um, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, obviously. I am doing this because I'm currently pregnant and I wanted to give myself a little bit of extra room to grow in this tank. The other thing is, is these are going to be easy to take out later if I want to. I didn't um, surge them and I didn't destroy the side seams. So it's going to be kind of like a temporary alteration. Next, I took the triangle that I marked and cut it out. My next step is to slash and spread that triangle and add some ease to the center because I'm going to sure it and I want it to have some extra fabric for stretching. So I mark it in the middle, cut it in half, and then add some ease. I'm gonna add about two inches to this godet. So once I get it situated and how I like it, I'm going to trace my new piece and I'm adding a flat top on the top of the godet, which will turn into a point after I sure it. So I'll just draw it out with my chalk, cut it out, and then cut out another one for the other side. So I'm marking with my chalk the shirring lines about every half an inch, which is not necessary if you don't want to do it, but it can help keep your shirring lines nice and straight. So here I am loading up my uh, machine with it, the elastic bobbin, which I have hand wound. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about hand winding an elastic bobbin. Um, it's not hard, it's just sort of time consuming. So I'm just sewing along all of those lines that I've made. And I am not c picking my needle up and trimming the thread, I'm just going in one continuous line to save time and elastic thread. Once I got both sides shirred, I pinned them onto the side seams of my tank to get an idea of how much space they would add to the tank and um, just to kind of get an idea on the form. Whenever I'm doing sewing projects for myself, I like to take breaks and try things on and fit things and to see how they're going to look before going to the next step. So this is very important. So then I cut out the circle half moons from my denim scraps and I pinned it onto the shirt where I want them to be appliqued. And I decided to put one on the placket in the front and one in the back. So once I pinned the pieces on, I secured it with my embroidery hoop and I'm going to do a blanket stitch on the outside of these half moon shapes. So I'm just gonna get it started and work my way around. The blanket stitch is going to kind of help it from fraying and if it frays a little bit that's okay with me I just don't want it to get really bad so I'm just gonna go all the way around and get it appliqued this is a time-consuming process but I find it really relaxing so here is a close-up of the stitching all the way around on the back applique and now I'm going to move on to my side placket piece. I'm going to do the exact same stitch all the way around and just take my time to get it done. So after I applique the pieces on, I'm going to stitch the godets onto my side seam. And I'm going to start at the hem and slowly work my way up to the armhole. This is very tricky and I'm using tons and tons of pins as you can see. This is going to help make sure there are no puckers on the first seam. And I'm just going to sew all the way up to the armhole and then stop. 
So once I get the first side sewn on with my machine, I'm going to take it out and pin the other side. I'm doing it this way to make sure that the point looks flat and even, which is really hard when it comes to go days. And I've done some wonky go days in my day. So this is uh, the way to do it. So it lays flat. So once I get it really secured with a lot of pins, I'm going to sew the other side of the godet and I am starting from the hemline up to the armhole. You can do it the other way if you want, but I think it's kind of hard to get it flat um, at the point of the godet. So I'm just taking my time and getting it completely sewn up and I'm going to do both sides of the shirt this way. So once I have the godets in, I'm going to just press the heck out of it and give it a lot of steam and make sure it is truly nice and flat. It turned out really well and I didn't have to redo any of the godets, which was awesome. I decided to serge the bottom hem because it's raw and if you're looking for a good serger, I love this serger. It's a brother and I'll link it down below for you. It's a very affordable serger and really easy to thread, which is awesome when it comes to a serger. So after I serge it, I'm just going to do a quick rolled hem and I'm just going to roll it up one time and I'm not even going to bother pinning it. So here it is after I finished it and I'm just wearing it with some biker shorts. It has plenty of room for me to grow and I love the light denim on the darker denim. Looks so cute. Here's another way that I styled it and I put this on my Instagram at onyxartstudio.com. This is kind of an updated Canadian tuxedo denim on denim, which is one of my favorite looks. I love it with the white tennis shoes and I'm definitely gonna wear this a lot this summer. I'm so happy that I was able to use this piece of denim and this shirt from my fabric stash. Be sure to follow me for more tutorials about sewing, dyeing, and upcycling. And you can follow me on my social medias at Onyx Art Studio. You can also check out my website for my online dyeing classes and sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date or a new class. If you like this video, be sure to check out these videos on my channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks so much. See you guys next time.